Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, what up, Bolt fam? It's the director, Chargers fans. We're going to be talking a little bit about Justin Herbert today, right? Who's ready for a little Justin Herbert hype on the channel today, dude? I do feel like we as Chargers fans are so incredibly lucky to have number 10 on this roster. And I do believe that Justin Herbert, as of right now, has a really good shot at MVP in 2022, which is going to be the main subject of today's video. I want to see this man host or hoisting that trophy at the end of the year. Maybe a couple of different trophies, right? Throw the Lombardi in there with it. But in all my years of watching football, I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite like Justin Herbert. Certainly not like out of the gate, like what we witnessed in week two of the 2020 season. Wow, man. Tyrod Taylor goes down. In comes in Justin Herbert, who almost defeats the Super Bowl champions at the time, the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, many have doubted his ability to, su to sustain such a ludicrous pace, right? And he's proved them wrong, especially in his second season. I truly believe that if the Chargers made it into the postseason last year, he would have been given, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers a serious run for his money in terms of contention for MVP. The Chargers really do have something special in Justin Herbert, and I think this could be the year that the world recognizes that fact as well. So in today's video, I'm going to lay out why I think Herbert could win MVP in 2022, as well as what that would mean for the young quarterback's career, man. A very, very big topic that honestly, last season, I feel like he was so close. I think things are starting to line up this season to give him even better odds, believe it or not, to uh, walk away with that re or award this season. So question in the comments. Herbert threw for 38 touchdowns in 2021. How many total touchdowns do you think he puts up this season in 2022? Let me know in the comment section below. Before we do get started, guys, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, and bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into this one. Lights, camera, action. Justin Herbert, a lock for MVP in 2022. Well, we're going to give a couple of reasons as to why I think Justin Herbert should be among the top listed players in the league uh, in early consideration for MVP. As a matter of fact, I don't think I even have this in my notes. I saw an article that kind of inspired this whole video today uh, stating that Justin Herbert, as of right now, does have the best odds at MVP whether it be because the dude is swollen camp or because of what he put up his first two seasons, we'll have to wait and see. So keep that in mind. I wish I grabbed that graphic for this video. Either way, let's take a look at the resume of Justin Herbert and why people should absolutely be taking him seriously in terms of the most valuable player in the league. Herbert put up the single best rookie season of all time, breaking multiple records, and then, of course, winning offensive rookie of the year in 2020 during what was a crazy season and with the pandemic and all the things that brought with it, absolutely stellar opening to this young man's career. He produced, uh, or he has produced almost 10,000 yards and 77, 77 total touchdowns in his first two seasons as well. Number one in the history of the NFL. I had my doubts that, uh, you know, anyone would usurp D uh, Dan Marino at any point in time. But you know what? This dude, Justin Herbert, made it happen. He's done all of this with a rotating door of head coaches and schemes and stuff like that. This will be the first season where he will find some consistency in those aspects. And honestly, that in itself does carry some upside for a tremendous Justin Herbert season this year. There is no player, in my opinion, more important to their team than Herbert in the NFL. Herbert is officially on everybody's radar. I do feel like after the first two seasons, it's impossible to ignore his name and what he's done so far. And you could argue that, again, maybe even since week two of the 2020 season where he kind of just jumped in and blew everybody's socks off. And I do think that his year two performance has almost solidified his status in the minds of a lot of NFL fans. 
So a big reason why I think this man, Justin Herbert, is uh, on the right track for MVP. Things are starting to line up even outside of Justin Herbert's spectacular play. The biggest reason I think we're going to list first in this video has been a transformation on defense. Okay, there's one reason I think Herbert did not win MVP in 2021. One reason and one reason alone. It's because we missed the postseason. Short and simple. I feel like if the Chargers made it into the playoffs, that people would have maybe been paying more attention to what he did individually as a player. Because the Chargers' lack of success, in my opinion, has played a part in him not winning in previous seasons. This, however, is about to change. This team is built better to actually come away with more wins in 2022. Now, the Chargers' offense finished as a top, what, five in the league last season? And I think it's because Herbert carried that team for the majority of those games. The biggest hindrance to this team last year was our defense. And now the team has, at least on paper, very impressively loaded up. Khalil Mack, J.C. Jackson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson, Bryce Callahan, Kyle Vinoy, et cetera, et cetera. Some very impressive moves this offseason. More aggressive than I think I have ever seen as a Chargers fan. And this is going to help create, you know, the help that Justin Herbert desperately needed to put away some of these games. Keep the score manageable for your franchise quarterback. In 2021, the Chargers defense allowed more than 21 points in 11 out of 17 games. Six of those games, they allowed 30 points or more. That kind of does tell a story as to how bad the Chargers defense was last year and how much work Justin Herbert had to do to keep the Chargers in every single game. This did put Herbert in a situation where he needed to carry the team on several occasions. The best example of this, I do think, was week 18 versus the Vegas Raiders. We all remember that one. The freshest game in memory, most painful game in memory for a long time for Chargers fans, which is really saying something. Chargers unfortunately missed the postseason due to that game. But also in that game, we cannot ignore <laughs> that this may have been one of the most spectacular individual efforts I have ever seen by a football player. Herbert converted multiple clutch first downs, a game tying, you know, last second touchdown. He fought to give us every opportunity to come back in that game, and we fell just short as a team. I don't think anybody in the NFL, any fan of the NFL, would put that on Justin Herbert at all. I feel like there's a lot of other revolving and surrounding factors that led to the Chargers just falling out of the postseason last year. But in my opinion, this new defense... Khalil Mack, uh, the additions that we've made to help even Derwin James and our already existing superstars like him and, and uh, Joey Bosa. This new defense to me is projected to be one of the best in the NFL this season. And this will limit these situations where Justin Herbert has to go out there and pretty much individually win games. But more importantly, this defense will undoubtedly offer the team better odds to stack wins. The Chargers lost five games last year by one score. I think it was versus Dallas, New England, Kansas City, Minnesota, and Vegas. I believe even a sturdy defense, especially when talking versus the run, a sturdy defense would have shifted our fate in all of those matchups. You add four or five wins to that column, I think Justin Herbert is in serious contention for MVP. Because in, in the bottom you know, line of it all, the biggest thing about it all, I feel like wins are the most important thing in football. But in terms of Herbert's shot at MVP, this undoubtedly plays a big factor in that decision as well. So more wins due to the, contri uh, the contributions that our defense will be you know, uh, bringing in in order to win games, more wins will equal a bigger opportunity for Justin Herbert to walk away MVP. And I think the Chargers are as ready as ever, maybe since the LT days, to walk away with a very nice record in 2022. Now, additionally, the defense looking fantastic. Well, what about the offense, right? Locked and loaded offense. This thought has entered my mind a few times, I will say this. With Herbert needing to do less carrying, thanks to our defense, Will he reach the same heights in terms of statage that led him to people talking about Herbert, the MVP? 
I guess what I'm trying to say is with Herbert having to do less in terms of offense, will his stats reflect what an MVP or deserving MVP would need to put up? And that's a solid argument, right? That supports a slight decline in his numbers. He just won't have to throw himself at every matchup anymore, right? Well, not really. Taking a look at this last year's MVP, Aaron Rodgers, right? The Packers were a top 10 defense in the league last year, which is kind of where I'm projecting the Chargers to be in 2022. Yet Rodgers still put up over 4,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. And this led him to his MVP win, uh, win last season. A good defense does not mean a quarterback's not going to put up good numbers. And this is something we've seen a lot, especially in recent years. The Rams, who won the Super Bowl, they had a stacked defense that helped him get to the big game. Yet Stafford still posted, what, 4,800 yards and 41 touchdowns. He was in consideration for MVP. And probably the biggest player not named uh, Aaron Rodgers last year in contention for MVP was Josh Allen. You know what? The Bills had the best defense in the league last year. And yet Josh Allen still posted 4,400 yards and 36 touchdowns. And was in serious contention for MVP as well. Herbert, in my opinion, will still have the opportunity to put up stats. And we know how good that offense can be. So let's talk a little bit about the offense, right? We cannot forget um, that the offense did get a whole lot better this offseason, which is kind of crazy to say with how good they were last year. We retained Mike Williams. That's huge. Herbert and Mike... These guys were on a very impressive pace early on, and I do think that was somewhat of a sneak peek of the Chargers maybe ushering in a new wide receiver, one in Mike Williams, and the kind of chemistry that you can build with a Justin Herbert with the sort of result that we saw. Lots of people were very excited about Mike Williams coming in at a huge value in fantasy football because the dude was just putting up outrageous numbers to start the season. Maybe a slight injury or something perhaps pushed him off that pace a little bit, but still, that does exist with Mike Williams, and retaining him was a very big deal this offseason. We boosted our run game. That's huge. We drafted, you know, a Spiller and Horvath. Those guys combined with Austin Eckler gives Herbert even more weapons for specific situations short yardage situations we weren't very well equipped to handle those situations last season you know what this should do this should help extend drives this should help open up the play action a little bit more and with a better and more consistent running attack it does open up what you can do in the pass as well justin herbert set up for success on the ground too additionally you got tight end gerald everett who's going to add another piece that I think Justin Herbert's absolutely going to love. I think Justin Herbert loves tight ends more than we know at this point. We had a little bit of Hunter Henry. We got a little bit of Jared Cook. This season, however, I think Gerald Everett, Justin Herbert, these guys are going to start creating chemistry very early. And I do think that out of the free agents that we've signed, especially offensively, I think Everett's going to be the one that surprises people the most in the early portion of the season. So we got Justin Herbert a lot of weapons. But lastly, probably the biggest thing that uh, I'm overlooking or a lot of people are overlooking in terms of Justin Herbert going out there for MB uh, MVP, the Chargers O-line is looking a lot better. Better than ever, in my opinion, with the additions of Zion Johnson, Jamari Sawyer. Yes, the right tackle situation is still a concern. But we didn't have Brian Bulaga last year either, and the Chargers still had a top five offense. And I do think the Chargers have a lot more options in terms of right tackle this season that currently are on the roster including Matt Filer, Sawyer, even Zion Johnson if they're desperate. I think the Chargers' right tackle situation will be resolved in camp. Worst case scenario, it's Trey Pipkins, and he's got a lot more upside than he did in previous seasons. This must keep the Chargers in the conversation for in or around top five offense in the NFL once again this season. The offense just got better. Now we've got a really nice defense to match up with it. It's going to be a very good time if you're a Chargers fan. One thing I did want to bring up too, which I think this started the conversation in terms of Justin Herbert rising the, on the board, you know, in terms of chances at MVP, it's going to be that the dude, uh, I, I labeled the segment here, Justin Swolbert. <laughs> the, the dude is absolutely jacked. This is one thing that got people jazzed was uh, Herbert's offseason progress so far. The dude's packed on some serious muscle. Now weighing in at what, 245 pounds? That's insane for a six foot six quarterback. He's starting to resemble a prime Cam Newton, in my opinion. A stronger Herbert could be an even meaner Herbert. 
in terms of, you know, carrying it himself, in terms of getting more zing on the ball. Can you guys imagine a Justin Herbert with an even more vicious arm? Oh, my goodness. Justin Herbert, man, I think he knows and he recognizes the situation in front of him. He's going to make the most of this offseason to get himself in the best game shape of his life to go out there, try and win a Super Bowl, and 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 obviously probably in the back of his mind MVP. But we know we know these players. They want to go out there and win games. They want to go out there and get a championship. So Justin Herbert is looking as swole as ever. Finally, I wanted to point out one of the most underrated aspects probably in this entire video. And that's going to be the schedule. The opponent lineup, okay? This spells great things for Justin Herbert in his third year in the NFL. The Chargers open up the season, as you guys will see here, versus Vegas, Kansas City, Jacksonville, Houston, and Cleveland. And I think also Denver here at the bottom. That's over the first six weeks, right? I don't want to count my chickens, okay? I get that. I don't want to come off as that dude. But man... That is a favorable look for the Chargers if I've ever seen one, especially considering what we saw last year. The early portion of the season last year was absolutely brutal. It was so hard to gain any momentum early on. You know what? This lineup that we're seeing here at the top of the season next season, this should offer Herbert a fantastic opportunity to gain momentum early. And oftentimes, and we say this a lot during our live streams, oftentimes momentum can be the one, one of the most important factors in football, especially one of the most overlooked. Gaining some momentum throughout the first six weeks is going to help Justin Herbert's case a lot. We then follow this up with matchups versus Seattle, uh, Atlanta, San Francisco, Kansas City, Arizona, and Vegas. Okay, I'd say at least three or four of those matchups are extremely winnable. But finally, to close out the season, we've got Miami, we've got Tennessee, Indianapolis, the Los Angeles Rams, and Denver. Not great, but not terrible either, right? And prove it games like the versus the Los Angeles Rams or the Tennessee Titans could certainly help Herbert build a case for MVP as well. Those would be big games. If we can come away with a, a win in one or two of those, that would be very huge. It's time to take that momentum and really put it to use towards the end of the season. My bottom line here is that this schedule is very favorable for Justin Herbert this year. Outside of Denver, San Francisco, maybe the LA Rams, I don't think we're going to see nearly as much pushback via our, you know, the, our opponents' defenses. At, not, at least it's not as much as we did last season, right? Defense last year, we went up uh, versus some of the best in the league. Additionally, with our brand new defense that we've got on the Chargers, quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence, Drew Locke, Marcus Mariota, Tua Tungavailoa, these guys are going to have a tough time scoring on the bolts. Between the improvements on our team and a much better schedule than 2020, or I should say 2021, I feel Herbert will have every opportunity to put on an even better show than he did last season. This schedule is looking really good. Some people don't like to admit it because, again, yeah, every team in the NFL, you cannot count, you know, you can't, cannot count them out. These are professional football teams. You can't take any opponent for granted. But it's also impossible to look at this year's schedule and last year's schedule and think to yourself, I think the odds are a bit better in our favor, especially early in 2022 versus 2021. So that does help build a case for Justin Herbert a little bit as well. So to close out this video, a bunch of things working out for Justin Herbert. Certainly, I feel like a lot of people are starting to come around to the idea of MVP. But... I think it's about making them believe, right? Because the MVP award, again, a lot of it's got to do with voting. It goes through, you know, specific associations and stuff like that. Maybe some people label it a popularity contest. I think Herbert's starting to enter that conversation for a lot of people. So my last point here is going to be very simple. Herbert is already one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game. And in my opinion, he's already worthy of the MVP title. I think last season, if we made the postseason, he would have made a very good argument for MVP as well. His individual effort last year was outstanding. But it's about making the world see what us Chargers fans see every single week, right? This kid is special. Living up to the term of generational talent that gets thrown around so often, I think very few players actually fit that mold. And Justin Herbert is one of them. He just happens, you know, to play the most important position in football. The Chargers as a team are set up for more success in 2021, mainly due to our defense. 
And in my opinion, this will result in more wins, more limelight for the Bolts as a whole in 2022. And at the center of it all should be Justin Herbert standing high among all the league's quarterbacks in the league. He's a genuine article. And with how everything's lined up this year, I think he's got as good a shot as anybody to, you know, be hoisted up as the league's most valuable player. Additionally, and this will be, you know, a little hint for, you know, videos later. I think the Chargers are very much so set up for a nice Super Bowl run. It's been a very long time, you know, since I've really honestly said to myself, this team is going to make a run. If there was any year as a Chargers fan in the last couple of decades to invest your hype, it's right now. And again, the man leading the team, the man leading this effort is Justin Herbert. And that's why I think Justin Herbert should be viewed as one of the top candidates for MVP, even before the season even kicks off. I'm sure we're going to do another video like this later down the road as we get into the season, but it's hard to deny at this point. And people are starting to really come around to the idea. So if you guys see something on Twitter like, oh, Justin Herbert, the leader in terms of chances for MVP, man, dude, go out there and support that claim because it's absolutely a possibility at this point. So guys, let me know in the comment section below. I also get excited. I think in the coming weeks, we're going to be doing a Justin Herbert like prediction video in terms of what we think he puts up uh, in 2022 in terms of stats. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, the pieces that the Chargers have assembled and how that's going to come into play during the season. we got a lot of ground to cover with how much you know the Chargers did this offseason in terms of how we think that translates into actual games. It's going to be a good time, man. Additionally, the hype video is almost done, dudes. We're going to be dropping that very, very soon. I'm going to take my time a little bit, clean things up, but it should be coming any day now. It should be a very good one. I hope you guys do enjoy it. Thank you guys again so much for all the support that you've shown me here on the channel. Very excited to continue building the hype as we approach one of the most, I would say, exciting seasons that I've ever seen as a Chargers fan. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. Hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. If you did enjoy this content, we'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty. Justin Herbert for MVP. Start getting used to the idea.